do you understand by the concept of a real politic? And do you think that it is a good concept? The entire alphabet list, you have to choose one letter, just one letter. Mm -hmm. And if I give you three clues to that letter, okay. okay, and just choose one letter within one second. Okay. Okay. The letter uh, must fly, the letter must sing, and the letter must sting. What letter am I talking about? You want to reform the society. Now you are advocating gradual reform, it's not radical. Even if you see somewhere a child is getting married to someone, you just advise them and you wait for them to respond to that. Don't force them to change. You were introduced in the talk show as India's official representative. Because of your office that you're occupying. Mm -hmm. Now the Chinese government is asking you to apologize, rather India to apologize, because right. you have attended. The Indian government has passed the ball in your court. It says that do what you deem fit. Suppose you have to write a written reply, mm -hmm. or you have to give a written reply rather, what that letter will be. Just write one paragraph. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Defining personality in terms of views that you Yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, to define myself uh, briefly uh, in terms of values, I think I am determined, honest, sincere, and uh, hardworking. And so I think the value of not giving up my values is something that I'll never forsake. I think I would I am I think I'll in any position that I serve, maybe civil services or any position, I think I want to stick to my values and never compromise on them. So adherence is the one value. What about this Yes, sir. So, I like the limitations of the cost benefit approach. So, the limitations. Uh, so, first, I'll briefly define by how I understand cost benefit approach. I think cost benefit approach looks at uh, life in terms of gains and losses. Because if you look at life as what am I gaining, and what am I gaining, and what am I losing? So, when you look at life in this uh, simplistic manner, you lose the beauty of the life. Because I don't think life is very simplistic uh, that you, you know uh, there's never a pure or clear gains or losses so it's always a mixture of losses and gains so i think a cost benefit analysis uh, reduces the life uh, the understanding of the life i think it's a reductionist understanding of the life the cost benefit approach it promotes objectivity or it is a hurdle in the path of objectivity i think uh, the intention of cost benefit approach uh, as per my understanding is a uh, is a way to attain objectivity i think uh, by getting a clarity of what you are gaining and losing. I think you are trying to bring objectivity in the life. As a civil servant, yes. you should be more objective than subjective or more subjective than objective. So, I think it has to be the combination of both. More uh, often than not? Yes, sir. More often than not, you should prefer what? Okay. Yeah. I think uh, objective, so far as the objectives are uh, fairer and subjective when the when the rules or laws are insufficient, I think that's where subjectivity comes. Can you highlight an incident from your life where you have exhibited objectivity? Objectivity, uh, I cannot think of it as, uh, I might take some time to yeah, think. Okay. I think um, while making decisions, uh, like say, um, uh, I'm not able to recall anyone. So. No. Take that. Amika, your optional subject, yes. as your DAF reflects, is political science and international relations. Yes, and uh, you have also completed your post graduation in international relations. Yes, Amika, what do you understand by the concept of a real politic? 
And do you think that it is a good concept that the political relations in terms of relations? So, real politic um, in the international in the terms of international relations is uh, a, a, a concept of realism. So, real politics takes into account uh, the uh, the behavior of the state and the reality. So, realism uh, as a theory deals with uh, deals with states. Uh, you know, uh, we don't take we don't go for idealist concepts, uh, but we take states on the face value. So, real real politics in that way uh, does uh, you know uh, there's a uh, so it considers the world as a self help. Uh, so, uh, there's a security dilemma in the world. And you accordingly, uh, the, your uh, your interaction with the state is accordingly shaped. So, uh, for example, uh, you don't have any idealistic concept or idealistic notion when you deal with the state. So, real politics uh, deals about pragmatism. It deals with the state on the face value. Uh, can you highlight at least two decisions mm -hmm. taken by India in the recent past, which reflects this ideology of realism? Realism, right? So, so I think um, I'll think on it. Um, I think the recent uh, India's voting uh, at uh, regarding up India's abstaining at UNSC uh, uh, when it comes to uh, sanctions on Russia. I think India abstained because uh, the decision was very pragmatic because our uh, our energy interests and our defense interests are very much tied with Russia. So it's uh, it's somewhere criticized as a as a stand contrary to the moral, uh, our moral stand, which usually we support uh, national self determination sovereignty. I think somewhere I think this was a example of realism displayed. Uh, Amrita, have you heard about this term called guided democracy? What so, do you understand by this term? I'm not sure about the term, so. Would you like to take an intelligent guess on this? Probably yes. Yeah. So, guided democracies are not democracies in the true sense. Uh, I'm just taking yeah. a guess of it. I think they are somewhere, uh, they're not democracy, they are democracies in the name, but their functioning are not really democratic, are not truly really democratic. Can you highlight, if suppose that is the definition of uh, guided democracy, can you highlight some guided democracies in the um, real world? So, I think so. Uh, recently, I think Weedem, uh, Weedem report had come. Uh, I think they had uh, given, uh, they have uh, categorized democracies in different forms. I think uh, Iran, if I can say, has democratic setup. However, uh, there you have uh, influence of Ayatollah's rule. So I think somewhere it is in the guided democracy. What kind of democratic setup Iran has? It has a, a I think, pres a prime minister form of government. Or presidential form of government. Okay, sorry, presidential form. Of Are you sure about I'm not really sure. Okay, what's the rule of Ayatollah's? Iran. So Ayatollah is a religious head. Uh, so in 1979, when Iran under, underwent uh, revolution or Islamic revolution, that is when the theocracy replaced. Uh, so it is a theocratic state, yet it has a democratic setup. I mean, the heads are theocratic. So uh, Ayatollah is a religious head. Is it a republic? Um, it has a president. So I think I'm guessing. What is the official name of it? Republic of. Uh, Ambika, what is the primary difference between authoritarianism and totalitarianism? Right. So, um, totalitarianism, authoritarianism, both are uh, very. Uh, so, totalitarianism is also a form of authoritarianism, but uh, the degree varies. So, authoritarianism is when state controls or uh, the uh, state has total authority. So, that is when we call a state as authoritarian. But a totalitarian, totalitarian state is a uh, it's a degree more, uh, the th authority is more uh, greater. So, totalitarian state controls not just the political sphere, it also controls uh, every walk of life. So, it controls the personal choices that people make. So, totalitarianism, as the name indicates itself, controls a to in total every walk of life. So, it interferes in religious matters, it interferes. What are the three modern types of liberalism? Uh, so, uh, liberalism, uh, feminism. If I can go uh, use critical theory, constructivism. You heard about contemporary political theories? Yes, sir. Can you highlight any one contemporary political theory of the 21st century? Uh, Postmodernism, sir. Okay. Ambika, I was going through your positions of distinction 
leadership and in school and college. Yes, sir. And uh, find that you have participated in a regional workshop on shared waterscapes of South Asia, organized by South Asian University. Yes, sir. Uh, and Dhaka University. It's one more point for you. Hello. Internet. And you were elected as coordinator for cultural committee. Yes, sir. As the coordinator for the cultural committee, what steps you took? Okay, sir. So, uh, so because I was part of South Asian University, which itself is very diverse in cultures. So I think uh, uh, we had people who used to play Rabab from Afghanistan. We had people who used to play Sarut from India. I think uh, it was a very interesting space as, as such because uh, that's a that's a place where you see people from different cultures coming together. So I think it was a great chance to be part of the cultural committee, and I organized a couple of events there so that uh, you know naming them as Talentia, uh, that is the title of it. So uh, uh, we kind of uh, try to uh, explore the explore the different cultures that we have. So, uh, so I think uh, we also encouraged people to come and participate. So I think this was some, one thing, and along with it, we also I think the cultural committee was active in organizing the college fest. So how you ended up in that office? Were you elected? Yes, sir. So we had elections. Okay. And uh, what was the franchise? And who participated? So I think I was anonymously elected. Okay, you were anonymously elected. So there was no opposition. <laughs> no opposition. Do you celebrate that kind of a situation where there is no opposition? Not really, sir. I think opposition makes a uh, one's candidature more stronger and I think it increases the credibility of the candidate. I wish I had an opposition. Oh. Uh, you also won first position in spur of the moment extempore and heuristics competition. Yes sir. Right. Uh, if I give you a topic now, can you speak on it? I'll try. It. Yes. I'll speak on social networking. Social networking. Can I take a moment yeah. to think? Social networking. So, uh, social networking to define is a way of connecting with people. It can be, uh, it, it is uh, establishing human contacts. So, it can be physical or virtual. So, I think in the in the 21st century, when we are witnessing uh, social media and uh, platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Spaces and Clubhouse emerging, I think social networking. Uh, has become more rampant and it has crossed boundaries. So today we see social networking not just limited to uh, not just limited to your uh, nearby spaces, but also a, a phenomena that has become very common in the global world. Uh, so, however, uh, there's a problem with uh, this kind of virtual social networking because I think uh, the virtual social networking has somewhere undermined the physical social networking that we have. I think uh, the the kind of relations we share. Uh, in person, physically, has come somewhere, has hit the, uh, hit the, uh, has been seen, has been seen some, some, some sorts of disruption because of virtual social networking. I think social networking is important uh, because that makes human, uh, that makes humans uh, more social. Because, uh, because as man is called a social animal, or humans, if I can correct it, are called as social animals. I think what makes us humans is our uh, ability to connect with people. And that is why social networking becomes important. And uh, our efforts should be in a way to balance our physical and virtual social networking. Vika, uh, uh, you have captained the women cricket team and uh, led it to a silver medal position in South Sports Fest in 2018-19. So, uh, who were your opponents? So, so uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, uh, there was a biology department. So it was a department, interdepartment competition. So we have so so, intra university kind yes, of competition. Yes. Okay. Uh, so apart from being the captain, what was your primary role in the team? So I was a bowler. You were a bowler, and uh, what kind of bowling? Fast so, bowling, spin, medium pace. Uh, not a really fast bowler, but I would consider as a fast bowler. Uh, what kind of bowler? Swing bowler, spin bowler? In swings. In swingers. So, what kind of balls you used? Like, was it a season ball, an like actual cricket ball, or tennis ball? So, uh, it was actually a tennis ball. Tennis ball. Too. Because uh, there was a low participation. Okay. Uh, 
Are you following the ongoing Women's World Cup? Yes, sir. As we speak now, now who is the leading run scorer? The uh, player. Uh, player, I'm not sure of uh, the recent developments, but. So what is where is India? Placed? India. India is in the fifth position, sir. Unfortunately, we got disqualified from, so we can't, we couldn't get the seat in the semi-finals. Yesterday's match, uh, India lost the match against uh, South Africa. Any important event? I think the, the no ball. I think the last over was very crucial. Had it not been a no ball, we have made it. Uh, can you name uh, six Indian players from the current Indian women's team? Women's team, sir. Uh, also highlight their rules. Okay, so starting with her captain, Mitali Raj. I think she's a great batsman. And then uh, Harampreet Kaur, if I'm pronouncing her. She's a batsman. Uh, Mitali Raj. She's a all rounder. Okay. And then Harampreet Kaur, uh, she's a batsman. She's a batsman? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then um, Smriti Mandana, um, Deepti Sharma. Uh, uh, Raj. What is the rule of Smriti? Smithy Vandana is a uh, ball, uh, batsman. Yeah, she's also a batsman. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Go on. And then, uh, uh, what, I'm really, I'm a little bad with names. Deepti Sharma, I mentioned her. Uh, Julian Goswami, uh, she's a baller and she has a record. Uh, you also like learning new languages. Yes. So, which is the latest language that you've learned? So, actually, I'm learning Spanish. Okay. I'm in the process of learning Spanish. So, I'm using this app called Duolingo to learn the language. What Spain is called as Espanol? Espanol. I'm not sure. I think that is how it's pronounced in Spanish. Why, why is it like Arab is called Arab people? Why Spain is called as Espanol? I have no idea. Uh, one last question from my side. Yes. You like Movies and TV series. Yes. Sir. It was the last TV series that you watched. Uh, so I'm actually watching Big Bang. Big Bang. Yes. Okay. And uh, it is what kind of a series? Is it a satire? Uh, so it's a humor, humor genre, and it has uh, elements of science in it. So it's it's like a mixture of humor and science. What existed before the Big Bang explosion? So. Uh, the Big Bang explosion uh, happens with the, so there was a dense, tiny particle. No, 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 I guess. Was there only one such explosion or several such explosions? Sir, uh, Big Bang theory talks about one explosion, I think. I know. Thank you, sir. Ambika. Yes, sir. Why do you spell your name with C and not K? I think uh, that's my family has put the name. So I asked my father, uh, and it, he said that it stands out. So I think, and the pronunciation becomes more accurate with C than K, I believe. Okay, what is the meaning of the name? So um, Ambika means Mother Goddess. It is also another name of uh, Parvati or uh, Goddess Parvati. Have you heard of Amba, Ambika, Ambalika? Yes, sir. They are the three persons in the uh, uh, mythology uh, Mahabharata. So the story I know is that uh, Bhishma Pitama he goes for the Swayamvara where Amba Ambalika are the three people uh, whom he uh, whom, uh, so he wins the Swayamvara and get them to the place. So Ambika is I think a mother of uh, Dhritarashtra. Uh, wait, Dhritarashtra. Are you sure? Uh, so Pandava, uh, I think Panduraj was the son of Ammalika. I think Dhritra. Okay, don't get, don't get confused, don't worry. Your date of birth is 14th of August. Yes, sir. Good. And Leo. Yes. What is 14th of August celebrated in India and what is, very, what is so special about this? So 14th August is when Pakistan got their independence and we remember it as a Pakistan uh, Remembrance Day since last year. It was a full term given to that day? I'm not sure of the full term but uh, I think it's it's in the line of uh, said, uh, remembering the Pakistan. I'm not sure of the names. 
Okay. And what is uh, your mother tongue? So my mother tongue is actually Marwari. Marwari. Marwari does not exist in the list? I think it has only scheduled language. It wasn't there in the list, so it has only mentioned as others. Thank you. You say that you are fond of cricket uh, work, uh, solving wordle. Yes, sir. Tell me something about wordle. So, wordle is a very recent phenomenon. I think it started in around October, October 2021. So, this was actually started by Josh Wardle. And so, he's a, so he started it uh, for his fiance. However, it later got popularized and Twitter became a platform uh, through which people started posting their wordle. And the uniqueness about wordle is you only solve it once. And it's uh, it's it's fun plus uh, it, uh, it's also, it also provokes you. I think it's it's a way to test your vocabulary, I think. Okay, there are three colors used in... Uh, are you aware of that? The wordle? Yes. Yes, sir. So... Uh, what are the three colors and what are the significance? Hello? green and uh, black or white the way you use the template so when you solve the word uh, so when you guess a word and the when you guess the right letter but the position of it is wrong then the, the letter is indicated through yellow color but when you uh, when you guess the letter rightly and the position is also right then it is shown in a green color when you guess the letter wrongly i mean if the word doesn't exist in the word if the letter doesn't exist in the word it doesn't uh, it is in the, it, because i use the night template so i think it's in the dark how was it supposed to be great? Hard great. Good. Uh, you talked about uh, on the spur movement externally. Yes, sir. And heuristics. Yes. What made you so fond of this uh, heuristics? I think, sir. Uh, uh, heuristics was a way, uh, so this competition of heuristics dealt with you are given a problem and you are given a time of half an hour and where you have to, uh, as a team you have to work and come uh, arrive at a solution. I think that makes, that is somewhere you uh, also see your role as a problem solver. I think heuristics is things you do. Uh, it is about uh, using, uh, solving or what with? Do you use an algorithm for that or do you use something else for that? So this was uh, regarding a social problem. So I think this was uh, this was purely a social issue based problem. When you are solving issues, do you use an algorithm for solving these issues, or do you use something else apart from an algorithm? I think uh, I don't use algorithm. I think I uh, I think we use our uh, we weigh the issue. And we also see what could be the best possible solution. So I think instead of algorithm, it is more humane approach to solving the problem. Do you call it human or will you call it common sense? Common sense, I uh, think, with human approach. What does humanity come into this thing? I think so. When, uh, when, uh, when we become too objective or when we uh, remove the humanic, humanistic aspect in it, the problem might not actually solve, uh, the solution that we are offering might not really impact produce that impact. I think we need, as a problem solver, we always have to have the humanistic approach. Okay. So tell me what is more important, creativity or knowledge? Um, I think both, sir. So if I ask you one, okay. one amongst the two. Sir, creativity. Why? So I think having mere knowledge would never uh, help you to solve anything. I think creativity uh, things helps you to think out of the box. It helps you to give uh, different solutions to the problem. So I think creativity makes knowledge more useful. Supposing uh, you know you want to ask you a question uh, from the entire alphabet list you have to choose one letter, just one letter and if I give you three clues to that letter, okay. okay, and just choose one letter within one second. Okay. Okay. The letter uh, must fly, the letter must sing, and the letter must sting. What letter am I talking about? Fly, sing, and sting. I am um, not. Can I sing? Uh, I'm not good. Uh, so, can you repeat it, sir? You have to choose one letter. Mm -hmm. 
and the clues for that are the letter must fly, the letter must sing, and that letter must sting. Sting uh, and sting. K? Uh, I'm not sure. So. Is it K? Will K sting you? And K fly? And K sing? I'm sorry, sir. I... What is the letter, sir? Letter B. Okay, okay, sorry. Heuristics, you said, right? I get the. I got it now. Okay. Uh, you talked about the India's uh, performance uh, in the World Cup, performance ongoing World Cup. Tell me if uh, now that uh, the men's World Cup we had uh, a while ago, mm -hmm. what was India's performance in that World Cup? You mean the Test World Cup? Oh, or the World Cup, the ICC. Yes. So I think uh, India could go through the semis, but the system, uh, the system of uh, qualification had uh, had changed. So India, so instead of group system, we had this uh, IPL type of system. So I think India lost a match against uh, New Zealand, I believe. I'm not sure. About. Did you get to the semifinals? I did. I'm not. I, I'm unable to recall it. You right. lost the first match. What did you win the first match? We consecutively won. won uh, the T Twenty, we couldn't. Oh, I'm talking about the ODIs. I got confused. Okay. But T20, we couldn't go to the semis. Okay. Uh, tell me, what is your take on the uniform separately? So, um, so uniform, the constitute the DPS piece, uh, Article One, Article Forty Four talks about uh, government striving to establish uniform seven four. And accordingly, I think recently, Uttarakhand government has also proposed bringing uniform seven four. So. Uh, Uniform civil code is a good move because it brings uniformity in civil laws. However, I think uh, uh, any form of uniform civil code should have a consensus. I think uh, bef before bringing any form of uniform civil code, I think uh, there is a need for reforms in personal laws because that uh, only when we uh, only when each personal law is reformed, that is when I think uniform civil code will have consensus and each religion would agree to bring in changes. I think as the law commission also recommended, I think reforming personal laws would be a first step in bringing uniform civil code. So part of the law commission was that the mention of the uniform civil code made it anywhere else also? Uh, I, in I, our constitution? Article 44. Sir. Is the mention of the uniform civil code yes, Okay, one last question. We have just gone through the epidemic of uh, COVID-19, right? Uh, rather, we are still in uh, the throes of it. What were we able to ask you? Three lessons that we have learned from this massive epidemic. Okay, sir. So, uh, I think these lessons I would categorize as personal lessons, societal lessons. So, I think on a personal level, I myself had got infected by COVID. And that is when I uh, kind of, you know, this phase was like a, a pause uh, to re reflect on myself, my own life. I think it also helped me uh, become a better person because I think we always get busy in our lives and we see, uh, we, we don't uh, think of our lives in a better, uh, in a larger picture. I think it helped me. Uh, to become, you know, reflect on myself and on societal level, I think there was a behavioral change. Uh, everybody started taking hygiene and sanitation as a serious thing, something that we always ignored in the past. And uh, uh, in the West, I read this in newspaper. In the West, there is a uh, phenomenon called great resignation. So, Sorry, great resignation. So, people actually start uh, stopped. Uh, uh, joining the uh, workforce and they started taking up different activities, something that they can focus on themselves. I think this at the societal level has become a big difference. And I think it also has helped us to move, be, move beyond economic approach and also think about uh, a holistic life because we always think development or growth in, merely in economic terms. I think uh, the pandemic was, an, uh, in a way, has taught us that your economic development is not enough. There's a need for socio-economic development where health is also taken care of. I think. Do you think, uh, in all fairness, was uh, COVID-19 situation handled well in India or not? So, uh, I think efforts were made, but certainly there were discrepancies because this was an unprecedented event which no one ever anticipated. I think uh, this could have done, but 
So in the hindsight, we can see that this could have been handled handled better way. Uh, surely there were some uh, lacking, but however, I think uh, efforts were made. Everybody tried. There uh, some things which we never anticipated, we were never prepared for. So I think this becomes a very big lesson for us in the future. So that any pandemic comes in, we are in a better situation. We need to keep our sector wise or. That's okay, okay. Uh, just uh, one uh, last question again. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Are you fond of uh, eggs or no? Sir? Are you a non veg or a vegetarian? Vegetarian, sir. You don't take eggs or No, sir. Supposing you were taking eggs. Okay, sir. Just I put it in. And you have a pet peacock. It lays an egg one day. What will you do with the egg? Uh, I would want the egg to become a peacock or a hen or whatever. Sure. Yes, sir. People, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sadhana. My bad. Your name starts with L. Yes, sir. What does L stand My father's name, sir. Nalit Kumar. And the uh, most letters mentioned, Amy Ganur. Yes, sir. Can you tell me a brief history of Amy Ganur? Sir, Amy Ganur uh, was uh, initially, uh, so if I go. A little back in history, it was under Vijayanagara Kingdom. So later, uh, when the state of Andhra Pradesh was yet to form, uh, in 19, before 1953, it was actually part of the uh, district of Ballari, which is currently now part of Karnataka. So when uh, in 1953, when Andhra state was formed, uh, so uh, the Emiganur was joined in Kanul district. So it is currently part of Kanul district. And the, even the name Emiganur has a, uh, uh, the etymology actually has origins in Kannada. So I think my teacher has told me like this that um, uh, Emigenur is actually a famous market, a bull market, so cattle market actually. So Emiga in Emiga in Canada is actually a, a buffalo. So Emigan Emiga Ur Emiganur, the place where a bull market exists. Do you think that India, as far as the beef cattle are concerned, Supreme Court is taking very selective view at some places it interferes with the religion? Some places it does not. Do you think that? What are the reasons? Sir, I think uh, India, Indian uh, approach to religion itself has been very, uh, as we say, our idea of secularism itself is principle distance model, where uh, you interfere only when. So our interference or the state's intervention. So I see judiciary is also part of state. So state interference in religion is not equal uh, or equidistant. Uh, so I think. Uh, the judiciary's, judiciary's approach towards religion is also uh, when it decides essentiality and non-essentiality of religion. I think uh, this border, this boundary line becomes important in judicial intervention. The Shirur Mat case has given the doctrine of essentiality. So how it decides essentiality? So, it's, uh, so there is no uh, single definition of what becomes essential or non-essential. So it is a case-to-case -case, uh, basis approach. I think we should attempt for one for sure because it is a complicated task. But I think uh, by attempting to define what essential is, I think uh, we can uh, remove the arbitrariness in it. Actually, there was a news item. It said that Kanun Circle Inspector is being with something like cash. Yes, Can you Kanun Circle Inspector is being with something like cash. Sorry, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of it. Imagine uh, you are the CEO of that office and that office is being available to cash. What would be your take? What would you do? Uh, firstly, uh, I think as a superior, I would uh, surely try to bring him or uh, find him. My immediate action was, would be to trace him and find him and inquire on why, what, what, has, what has actually gone wrong. And if he's guilty, then for sure I'll make sure. I think I'll uh, using the technology or probably uh, because we have technology, I think I'll try to trace him some technology. Maybe his mobile, uh, last mobile contact. India, trace mobile. Does police require warrant? Without a warrant, they can trace him. I have no idea. Yes, I am also Yes, sir. Do you think that you have 
well has failed to perform its role properly in this nuclear crisis. And it should be abolished. So, I think uh, seeing the current situation, uh, I think UN has not performed up to the mark. And UN as an institution was required to establish peace and stability and ensure that wars and aggression, aggressive acts don't take place. I think in that way, UN has certainly not performed uh, and it has become uh, captive of two, uh, super great power rivalry. So, I think UN has issues. But I think abolishing for UN for this reason would be like throwing a baby with a bath water. I think UN calls for a reform, and there's a need for a better, uh, better institutions that can actually bring uh, parties to account. How do you prefer medical reforms or medical? I think uh, gradual reforms would be a better way. How do you think sometimes medical reforms are also required? So. Uh, the problem with the radical reforms is uh, people take time to adjust, and radical reforms uh, always come. Suppose you are talking Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. Or well, aware that Rajasthan is facing an issue of land management. You want to reform the society. Now you are advocating gradual reform and not radical. Even if you see somewhere a child is getting married to someone, you just advise them. And you wait for them to respond to that. Uh, force them to change. Am I no, sir. Uh, my idea of radical reform is not this. Uh, for sure, we have institutions. Uh, so, uh, legally, uh, we are trying to address child marriages. But I think the true change on the ground can only come when we go for gradual reforms. So, I think uh, in, in, the, in the case that you have defined about, I think there is a need for legalistic as well as uh, persuasive tactic. So, I think uh, here, gradual and radical reform. So when we, uh, I think if we do that, uh, maybe on paper child marriages uh, won't happen. But I think this will only uh, happen illegally. What are the social reasons to make child marriage? Okay, so I think uh, one is uh, the dowry system. And uh, I think no female literacy because Rajasthan has. I think, I think often women are seen as a liability and not as an asset in the society. And I think uh, because female literacy is low, lowest in the country, Rajasthan has the lowest female literacy. I think when women don't start, uh, women are not sent to the schools, uh, parents often think of getting their children, their girls get married as soon as possible. I think if women study, uh, the, the the age of marriage automatically rises. Are you in favor of uh, increasing the age of marriage with women to So I think. Uh, the intention behind the move is uh, good because it really wants to bring gender equality because often men are married at 20, the age of uh, men to get married is 21 but women is 18. This shows that uh, we have a different way of understanding gender. However, I think uh, this alone would not be a solution. Uh, and there's also a problem with the age because of making it 21 is because uh, the definition of adult is 18. Uh, when we say a, a person is adult is 18 and as an adult a person has a choice uh, to decide whom to marry and when to marry so when we are imposing 21 that, that becomes an issue so i think uh, if the intention of rising the age of 21 is to ensure that women get more educated and they get more opportunities this can only happen when we also provide them with better opportunities to, and greater access to schools and colleges you studied at Actually, uh, I studied in a college which is affiliated to a school. What is the motto of Osmania University? Uh, the logo has Tamasum. Uh, I'm not sure of the notice. What is the similarity between Indian culture and Afghan culture? Similarity. Um, not really. Uh, so, uh, if I have to say, Afghan culture is not a unified culture. There are a uh, mixture with, uh, so uh, you have Pashtun culture, you have Hazara culture there. So, different multiple cultures. Similarly, India is also a mixture of cultures. So, there's, uh, there's diversity in Afghan society as well as Indian society. Uh, 
and uh, there's a connect uh, in bollywood also i think i i had a classmate uh, in from afghanistan who would say the indian dramas and indian movies are actually really popular in afghanistan five important points please sorry this has uh, always been my dream i think it started uh, in childhood uh, when i uh, my introduction to this was uh, obviously popular culture uh, but the more i got to know about the service and the more i got to know about the duties and the uh, responsibilities that the service has i think my interest in it has increased what kind of duties do you fulfill after my service so um, i would work on education uh, and social economic development of society and also upholding the constitution values what about the tv series and movies that yes. you mentioned do you think about that series should be regulated time uh, i think they have to be regulated so uh, the reason is web series uh, today have uh, permeated uh, across the uh, society and they have a greater impact just like how tv series have i think so web series uh, have to be brought on par with tv series because tv series are regulated i think web series need to be they have an uh, autonomous body of, of themselves i think uh, the tvs yes, have self yes self regulated i think uh, the first step would be them uh, having a internal accountability mechanism and if they fail i think there has to be a better mechanism on the upper uh, near the government i think so i think they, they both should be on equal par if their impact is equal or if, so uh, recently i think government has brought in the rules under it act digital uh, media rules i'm not uh, sure of the name i mean the name but i think they have uh, requested for a compliance officer uh, uh, at the media platforms and they also there is a three tier mechanism for regulation where uh, they have one is uh, at the level of internal mechanism where they are responsible for their regulation and then ib ministry i think it regulates the digital media what is the difference between myth fiction and science myth fiction and science <coughs> Okay, so, uh, so uh, fiction is uh, something that is imaginary that you uh, create. That's a product. That's a product of your creativity. Uh, that can be either uh, inspired by real facts or it can be completely different, uh, disassociated with the reality. Fic- uh, myth is uh, sometimes truth that is mythified. I mean, there's an exaggeration. There's an element of exaggeration in it. as per my understanding and science is something which is uh, which is which is experiment based which is which can be proved which which has a, a clear a causal link, uh, linkages so i think there is a when you say something is scientific it has a, it, ha- it can be proved i think there is a scope of proving it mahabharata is a myth a uh, mythology as it is called Can you tell me difference between myth, myth and fact? I especially myth and myth. Sir, unable to recall right now. Cultural, Cultural committee, but what is it? Yes. Right now, I'm unable to recall. Uh, as I can see, you don't like Andhra Pradesh. Why? So it's not that I don't like Andhra Pradesh. It is not that uh, why you have allotted it to pick zero. So that is how the because I all whenever I wanted to become an IAS officer, my idea was always to not serve in the home cadre, rather get out of my comfort zone because home cadre home cadre always becomes your comfort zone. Yeah. I, uh, I thought now you are from Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. You are from Rajasthan. You are from Rajasthan. my ancestors my great grandfather had come you see that what uh your parents were based in rajasthan your grand great grand grandfather came from rajasthan yes sir if you are not all of the home cadre then why should uh prioritize rajasthan or at least you have given the first place in order of preference in home cadre 
And in case of Andhra Pradesh, you have a lot of big cities. So, if you compare the two of them, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan. You have prioritized Rajasthan. Sir, actually, while filling the DAF, when you don't choose home cadre, it automatically automatically becomes zero. So, so that's otherwise I would have choose. I have nothing against Andhra Pradesh. I think I I I'm more fond of Andhra Pradesh than me. I think that's my home state uh, that has shaped what I am today. It's just that I always, as an all Indian all Indian service, I always wanted to serve. And I don't. I did not want to have a regional bias. So that is why I wanted to get out of my home cadre. As it is an all India service, I think I wanted an all India experience. Nothing against Andhra Pradesh. One last question from my side. Yes. Sir. You have prioritized Indian foreign services over Indian services. Yes, sir. What is the situation? Sir, I think. Uh, I had I have a master's degree in international relations, and uh, that makes me more. Uh, Suitable for IFS than IPS. I have a little background in international relations. I think uh, that will help me to be a good diplomat or a foreign servant, a foreign service uh, officer. Yeah, than uh, so, I think uh, between IFS and IAS, I always uh, liked, or I think I would be more suitable as an administrative officer. So that is why IFS as at second place and IAS at first place. Yes, sir. Uh, you have also mentioned one of your hobbies is journaling. Yes, sir. Can you tell me what is the golden rule of journaling? So, uh, this is journaling is. Tell me about this. Just tell me what is the golden rule of journaling. Do you have any idea? For me? I can take. I'm not really sure of it. Suppose you have to make one. Okay. What it? I think honesty and integrity. Honesty and integrity. Because a reporter should uh, not have a biases when he when he or she reports. Now, now uh, you have given a very high preference to the Indian foreign services. At second place. A very high preference. Like the list of twenty odd services near the prospect here, it is placed at the second position in foreign services. Amika, imagine that you have made it to the Indian foreign services, and you are now representing India in say China. And uh, there is a talk show which is being conducted, mm -hmm. in which you are one of the guests. And in that talk show, there is a person who is representing Tibet. Mm -hmm. And he opens up into an open diatribe against the Chinese establishment. The talk show ends, and now the Chinese authorities are furious. Mm -hmm. They demand an apology from the government of India because you attended that auction. The government of India writes to you that you are in full authority to take the best measure that you can think of at this point. What will be your answer? Will you apologize to the Chinese establishment? Sir, uh, one clarification. Is this talk show hosted by India or I am just no, a participant? Just like some TV channel or a radio show or something like that. Right? You were one of the inventors. You have no idea what okay. is about to be spoken by other panelists. Mm -hmm. But suppose someone has spoken and about the Chinese establishment. Right. But you were introduced in the talk show as India's official representative because of your office that you're occupying. Mm -hmm. Now the Chinese government is asking you to apologize, rather, India to apologize because right. you have attended. The Indian government has passed the ball in your court. It says that do what you deem fit. Suppose you have to write a written reply, mm -hmm. or you have to give a written reply rather, what that letter would be. Just write one paragraph. So you can speak. So before writing an apology or any sort of clarification, I think uh, I would make my stand clear right at right at the top. Just give a reply. I'm saying it should be apologetic or something like that. Suppose this is the charge that has been leveled. Now you have to reply. Give a one paragraph reply. Okay, sir. So, uh, should I answer? I would. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, there is. I believe there is no question of apology as such because India did not host the talk firstly, and India did not uh, talk anything against China as such. We have always uh, respected China's interests when it comes to Tibet, and I, I as a representative of government, would try to make the stand more clearer. 
and make sure that uh, whatever has been uh, uh, said by the Tibetan representative is not is not that something India identifies with. I would rather give, uh, clarify my stand rather than in, uh, giving an apology. Apology for not doing something wrong would be a uh, would, be, would not be fair on the part of India. I think my attempt would be to uh, in the anything that I would write and explain that would be more of a clarification that India respects China's position on the Tibet or the policy that India has traditionally followed. Suppose you write just one line, mm -hmm. write the official line, speak as if you are writing. Go on. Okay. One line. One line uh, one means. Line okay. To this end. India regrets uh, that China felt something. Uh, felt that India supports uh, Tibetan Republic. I'm going beyond the line actually. I think uh, India regrets that China misunderstood our uh, participation. India uh, India makes it stand clearer that today India's position has not changed, and India respects China's sovereignty and uh, its policy towards Tibet. One China policy. Thank you, so then, let me put things first. Okay, sir. Your communication skill is good. Your personality is very vibrant. You are still very young. This is your second attempt. Yes. A postgraduate, and uh, you have a very good command over your hobby section. All these things. So there, you have answered very well. Also, when I asked you the question related to women's world cup, what happened to India's chances and all, you were very up to date on that. Even you mentioned the no ball, which costed us the match. So, in that area, you performed really well. But coming back, this is a critical analysis team. Okay. So, we must also understand where we lack so that we can improve our chances. Right? So, the first thing, Ambika. Uh, which was not at all on the mark was the degree of formal interaction. You appeared to be very informal at times, and that was also reflected in your language. You used the word you know, you know, on several occasions. Yes. Once I asked you a question with respect to, I think, uh, with respect to what. Where he was talking about colors and combinations and all that. And lastly, he said grey. So, as uh, he was about to ask his questions, and sir was about to end his questions, you, in that period, interregnum, you used the word hungry. 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 Do you understand I that? Guess. So, that is very informal. Your eye contact. Like when I asked you the question, Kept on um, moving your eyes between me and him. You neglected him altogether. When he started asking the question, you altogether neglected him or for the majority of your friends. You were not looking at the third person or the person who was sitting far from where you were physically mm -hmm. focused. Only got the right way of eye contact is when somebody asks you the question, you must. Look into that person's eyes, and you should not gaze. Rather, you should have a decent look, right? And when you are about to answer, before you answer, you should slightly lower your gaze. It gives an impression as if you are processing the question. You're talking after you have some thought and that talk, right? And then while you are speaking, you should primarily look at the person who has who has asked you. And in between, you should steal some soft glances so that others do not feel let down. Okay. Also, you are sitting slightly inclined on one side. You understand that? Just look at the distance okay. of your right hand from the right arm wrist and from the left arm wrist. You understand that, dear? So as you sit, your spinal cord should touch the back of the seat so okay. that you remain very. Okay. Energetic and you look very attentive. Otherwise, there is a kind of uh, you can say laziness after some time in the because your body would definitely respond right to any kind of pressure. Then you were constantly playing with the mic. 
Your fingers were rolling all over the time. Remember, dear, this is not a test of your knowledge. Knowledge has already been tested in free and mains. This is a test of your personality. Understand that? And so that's why I would suggest that you should keep the mind there and then keep your hands like this. Not like this, otherwise, you will be not playing with your fingers. Or like this. Whatever makes you talk, or like this. Whatever. But keep them in one place and do not move them. At times, you swayed your hands and the swaying was very exaggerated. So much so that you moved your hands even beyond the armrests. You should never go beyond the arms. Otherwise, it gives an impression as if you are trying to uh, talk in a very informal way or you're talking to your friends and all that. Right? So that's one thing. And listen to the question very carefully. At times, the question was not complete, but you started answering. At least you said the words up. And then you kept quiet. Understand that, dear? Then I asked you a question about the uh, elementary law. Is she a batsman? She did score the century year. What about Smriti Mandana? Are they batsmen? I think. Are they men? I got the point. Do you understand that? Bad yeah. So, see, it doesn't matter who is batsman or who is bowler. I right? just care about it. Uh -huh. I care about how much is your attention right. when you are listening. Otherwise, you will pick any social media words. And I, that is I what the impression would come across the table. Do you understand that? Yeah? So, listen to the question very carefully. Then, once you said, uh, when the question was asked regarding what was the men's performance in the World Cup, we started talking about the 50 over World Cup. We did oh, not yeah. ask for clarification. If you have not understood the question, please ask the member. Sir, can you please elaborate? question properly. They would be more than willing to do that. But uh, an answer which you give by not hearing the question properly will not put you into a very good state in the interview. Do you get that dear? Yes. Also, when he said that uh, it is the T20 World Cup or rather you yourself rectified it. I, and then you said this word, my bad. That's not formal. It is not at all formal. Do you get that dear? Should not use. I apologize. It would be a formal way of interacting. Then, I asked a question about something I don't remember the context here uh, now, but uh, you brought in Iran. A it's democracy. A, a democ democracy. Guided democracy. Guided democracy. Although you define guided democracy more or less appropriately, which was, it was an intelligent guess. But then you said it is Ayatollah, it is not a democracy. Uh, Prime Minister, parliamentary form of democracy, the presidential form of democracy. I was very really See, if you're not sure, do not give answers which create more breeding grounds for questions. Okay. It is not necessary that you would know everything under the sun. Only thing is, how will you behave when you do not know this? That is what is being tested. Say that, sir. Uh, right now, I'm not able to recall what it is. And do not say this very often that I'm failing to recall, I'm not able to recall. It gives an impression as if you have read everything. You're not able to recall. Rather, you say, I'm not aware. I would definitely read. Okay. So it says that you're not aware, you're willing to. Okay. So it shows a good part of your personality. Right? Uh, otherwise, Amita went in. Into some of the questions regarding your prizes, medals, Andhra Pradesh, why it has been awarded as a CEO figure, then uh, your hobby section, and all of it, they were handled absolutely well. They were handled very well. Barring one, where I have asked you that uh, first position in Spur of the Moment, except for an heuristics. What I gave you a topic, right? Social network. You first started talking about social media. Then you rectified, you did a post correction somewhere in there. So, what is social networking? So, if you are not clear with the topic, ask for a clarification. Okay. To understand that, never start without asking for a clarification. That's why you do this uh, drafting and voting. So, voting section is even in the central government files. For what? For asking clarifications. 
you understand that? More for expressing the feelings. So you have to be aware about that. So see, Amina, you have to maintain an attitude of learning all the time. Then only you can improve. You should understand that this entire exercise is being conducted to help you. Right? These things could have happened all the detail. And that could have costed you dear. But it is your good fortune that you are not aware about some of your mistakes. But that, that's my feedback. Uh, otherwise, for a brilliant candidate, very young female candidate, and this encourages the participation of women in administration, and you have a very rich background. You have so many hobbies, which reflects. अगर जैसे हम बातें कर रहे थे तो पेपर देख के सिलेक्शन होता था ब्रांड पार्ट। यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट? सो यू हैव टू वर्क ऑन दिस इज़। सर, सर, आई विल टेक। सर। बिटकर वेल ड्रेस्ड। ठीक है, बट वेरी फ्रैंक विद यू, आई वुड रादर प्रेफर टू वेयर लिटिल लाइटर माइल्डर कलर्स। इस दिस इज़ नॉट द वन you look much better, you look much more confident than me. Thanks. Uh, your hair, I think, uh, is disheveled. It's uh, when I was traveling, it, like, okay. it came so to make the... sure that uh, that is an issue that you keep in mind. Your uh, eye contact uh, has been rightly pointed out, but I felt uh, I don't know your eye contact was it showed me as if you were nervous and intense. Your eye movements were very abrupt. Your eye movements should actually be very smooth and flowing. It should not be abrupt, tuck, 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 as any much. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it should actually be, right? So, uh, and look at all the uh, panelists. There are eight people sitting there, you have to share and steal a glance with all, all of them. Every number of panelists are really. It's not that the person who's in the corner, he is neglected completely. But primarily, the focus will be on the person who's asking the questions. Now, you are carrying a kerchief in your hand also. Don't carry anything with you at all. Your hand should be absolutely empty. In this case, yet you had a mic all right, but a modern mic, you also had a kerchief in your hand. Don't carry anything with your hand and, uh, and keep your hands tight so that they are not moving around. Extensive hand, hand movements and extensive head movements also along with you. The Leo, you know, Leo people are supposed to be dramatic, very passionate, very vivacious people. So, here you have tempered them a little bit. That was, I think, uh, you don't have to be so dramatic in an interview with you. It gives a feeling of being too uh, impersonal, very informal. And uh, watch, you shouldn't be wearing a watch, right? On the final day, don't uh, wear the watch. Okay, you, that's not happening. Yes. You are sitting on the edge of the seat, if you point it out. And too much of you know, I think. I work on it. So these mannerisms uh, can sometimes cost. And uh, uh, you, in a couple of instances, you start answering, but then later on, you correct it and said, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. If you're not sure, uh, that happened because you jumped to uh, start answering. So whenever a question is asked, you wait for a second, give maybe a small pause, and then answer. Within that small fraction of a second, you'll be able to you know, collate your thoughts and then answer. So it should happen that you start answering immediately and then you move back and say, I'm sorry, I'm not. That gives a very bad impression, right? Uh, you have a lovely smile, but it kept disappearing in between. And that is where your appearance is shown, right? So keep your smile all through. Except in places where it doesn't uh, deserve a smile. It should happen if you smile through. You are asked a question about uh, if I'm in Ethiopia and you start smiling there also. It should happen that way. Uh, what actually uh, I was surprised was uh, 14th August when I asked you. You were not sure about what the day is named. 14th oh. of August. You said partition, partition. It is called as partition. Horrors, remembrance, mm -hmm. say. I was unable to recall yes. it. Yes, so that you must, you must know, and I, I can assure you that is a question that is definitely how to be asked. And work on right? it. So you must remember that. And uh, overall, uh, 
would uh, attempt and in any case uh, has not been out. Very good chance. I can keep the things in mind because whatever we have pointed out are for your yes. benefit. Sure, sir, keep I in mind you. that these things have to be avoided. Your performance is bound to jump by about 20 to 25 points uh, marks. So keep these in mind. Sure, Minimum. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Amrika, uh, yes. points first. Your dressing was very good. Yes. As Sarah mentioned, we have higher mind colors. Smile was good. Uh, the answer which we like was uh, creativity answer. Uh, the point of the creativity and all Answer for COVID question was also good. Some uh, highlights, negative. What I felt from people was that there was some kind of anxiety you are when you are uh, inherently hyperactive. You are you uh, do not wait for the question to finish and start answering. Mm -hmm. And initially when you came you were breathing heavy. It was because maybe because you came uh, from stairs or something like that. It all shows that you are nervous. Anything combined together shows your nervousness. Work on that. Uh, you start answering a question and then you want to ask, and then suddenly stops and say, oh, for it's time of time works. See, an intelligent person is the one who knows what she knows and who also knows what she doesn't know. What I thought from your interview was that. If you answer in a show, then you realize that you will not be this question. So take a pause mm -hmm. and uh, process the question in the mind and uh, then make a choice whether you vote or you don't. And then answer. How to review casual response is good. In for my try to make it more and more fun. And one instance is uh, you answered like, uh, can I take an intelligent guess? You wanted to say, can I take a guess? But you didn't say that properly. Can I take a guess? Uh, behave like, can I take? Okay, I need to come to speak clearly. What do you want to say? It's a line of system, right? What you want to convey that it has to be crystal clear. Right. Okay. Uh, in one question, then, sir, ask you uh, what lessons we draw from the COVID mm -hmm. pandemic. You started answering uh, on your personal level. And personally, sir, I uh, learned to do this. Sir, specifically mentioned what lesson we draw, we as a nation. So I was expecting that you start with you know, uh, lessons from the nation point of view, economic lessons, the political lessons. Mm -hmm. okay. So focus on the question. A radical reform answer was not that satisfactory. I would expect. I expect. Otherwise, your performance was uh, good. I mean, thank you, sir. Okay. And your bright choice. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, regarding one question, uh, I think it was related to Yamigan. Uh, yes, sir. The answer was brilliant. The answer was brilliant because you explained the stuff very well. But one question related to Mahabharata. The answer was not uh, very good because the question was: Was it myth, or is it myth or fiction? A brilliant answer would be: It's an epic. Right. Do you understand that? Uh, Don't fall into that. Right. I'll take into that. Do you get it? Uh, I mean, if I have to say that there are two large points that you should be carrying away from this interview. One is work on the formal way of speaking right. first. Second, listen to the question properly before you start answering. If you can just work on these two areas, whatever is being awarded today to you, add 30 to 35 more to that. At least, even beyond that. And Amrita, you know that it is your rank that will determine whether you will get your preferred choice of service or not. And for that rank, even your scores matter. Yes. Mains can get you. To the list, but it's not sufficient to give you the highest scores. For that, you need brilliant scores in the personality test. And as you can see, rightly calls it personality test. It's not an interview. We are not exchanging views here. Rather, we are trying to understand what kind of a person are you. The 
the idea is to ascertain whether you can be paid for this. Right. Like that, and whether you will be an asset to the bureaucracy or you will be a headache in the bureaucracy. You get it? Yes, sir. So, if you speak slowly, clearly, loudly, thinking and knowing of what you are saying and you are confident at the same time, then the entire responsibility of the district can be put on your shoulders. You get that? Just think objectively. If you are the recruiter, what qualities are you looking for? Don't you prefer these qualities? Yes. Over informality and lack of ability to understand the question, speaking without thinking. Otherwise, as I said, and as everybody pointed out, the brilliant this staff is. Brilliant because all the areas are covered very well. And I was just discussing this with the other team members that you are a great example of cultural synthesis. You're coming from Rajasthan, yes. born and brought up in Andhra Pradesh, and now willing to work outside Andhra Pradesh. What do you say? Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So, how do you work on that? If you work on this, I'm sure to work on that. When is your interview? 11th April. So you have time. Just for a week. Sure. And now try to sit. Okay. As you sit, I'll sit properly by looking at where you are sitting. Okay. Center. I think I yeah, started leaning over on one side. So if I start talking like this, I know I do. It gives a very bad impression on the person. Right, sir. Right. On the other side. Otherwise, based on this person, even after so many trends and documents, still the board at the one at use, one fifty, one fifty-five, anywhere in that region, right? So just add thirty-five to it becomes one eighty. Sure, sure. I'll work on it. Unless you have uh, done some disaster in the written examination, which I don't think you have done because you have studied political science throughout the years. <laughs> so you must have done very well in political science. Uh, otherwise, also it seems that you've done very good. How would you write your essay and They went they fine, went fine so. right? So, just the five years. Sure, this You may end up with these marks, you may end up in the arguments. Again, get the examples. Study Right? Work on it. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.